We are all writers now. Whether you want to write a book or a blog or better text messages or emails, I want to help you with a free ebook called 11 Ways to Write Better. You can find that at theminimalists.com slash resources. Enjoy. The Minimalists. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are the Minimalists. Today, we're going to talk about organizing. We're going to talk about tidying up. We're going to talk about cleaning your home with today's guest. Melissa Maker is here from cleanmyspace.com. Melissa, thank you for joining us. I'm, I'm really happy that you're here today because I think you sort of form this detente between the organizers and ryan and i have spoken at like professional organizer events and watching the videos on your channel jessica first sent them to me and i'm like oh she gets it uh because ryan and i will often say like the easiest way to organize your space is to own fewer items yeah and you understand that but also you understand that organization even with having fewer things is still important organizing is not the answer though it's not just well we need to go to the container store and spend fourteen hundred dollars <laughs> and then we're going to put all of our junk in our basement yeah, in a bunch of nice containers the right? problem is we don't have enough storage containers <laughs> right. or or we need a storage unit yeah <laughs> Our first question today is from Amuna in Columbus, Ohio. Hi, my name is Amuna Murray. I'm calling from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I'm interested in pursuing the minimalist lifestyle, and I'm wondering how you can work that out if you happen to be married to a pack rat. Well, I'm sure you deal with this. Uh, people who live with pack rats or they themselves are pack rats are different from their significant other. Um, I know my my wife and I aren't exactly the same either. Um, and so it's all varying degrees here, but when you run across this, how do you, how do you talk to people about dealing with a pack rat in their family? Kindly, <laughs> kindly, because at the end That's of the day- That's just because you're Canadian. Well, that has something to do with it. But really, I mean, when somebody is holding on to stuff, we all know that that's an emotional response. We know that there's something deeper. We know there's a reason why they're holding on to it. Mm. Uh, it could be a financial thing, a fear thing, a sadness thing, an anger thing. We don't know. It could be a family thing. There's could be guilt involved. So it's not the symptom, the stuff that we have to talk about. It's what's really going on. And how can we find ways to work together to part with some of this stuff? It is very overwhelming at first, which is why this situation has to be dealt with kid gloves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the person... Amuna would have to be very delicate in the way that she speaks to her partner about that because it can feel offensive. It can it can hit you where it hurts. Yeah. I think that also you have to realize, Amuna, like I don't know how old you are, but let's say you're 30 years old. How long did it take you to stumble across simplicity or, or minimalism and then finally embrace it? Maybe it took you 30 years or maybe when you first saw it, maybe you saw a documentary or you read a Marie Kondo's book or, or something like that and you realized like, Oh, maybe this is something I, I'd like to consider. But how long did it actually take for you to embrace it? And oh, by the way, were you ready for that message when you found it? Maybe someone else in your family isn't necessarily ready for that message yet. And so I think that kindness is also giving them the space that they need not to, to force the change, but to be the, the sort of leader of the change and showing showing the benefits that it, that, that often appear from well, letting go or organizing or tidying up. What are some of those benefits that you find? I, I know you talk about it in a lot of your videos um, over on your YouTube channel, but let's talk about some of the benefits of, uh, of well, cleaning the space. Well, obviously, obviously we know it's easier to clean when there's less stuff, mm. there's less there's less dust, there's less dirt, less things to move when you're, you know, vacuuming under a surface or putting something away. I, it's like under the bed. If you have a ton of stuff under the bed, how hard is it to actually clean under the bed? It becomes impossible, <laughs> right? You know, uh, not that I'm a feng shui person, but according to feng shui, it's not good to have stuff under your bed. Mm, interesting. So, that's where I, I keep my snowboards. Ooh. <laughs> well, maybe if you took them out, some really good things would maybe. happen to you. No, well, I have a loft, <laughs> so like it's there's very little, which we don't need a lot of storage space, but the snowboards I totally stash underneath the bed. I don't, I don't know what, I'll, I'll put them on the roof, I guess. I don't know. You can string them up to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but aside from that, I find, you know, when I walked in, and so full disclosure, I hate cleaning. Mm. I still do, and that's always been my thing. And, you know, I've just found over the years that cleaning 
is is an it's sort of an act of self love. I take mm, care of myself mm. when I keep my space clean. You can tweet that. Show. So <laughs> okay. that's yeah. pithy. Yeah, yeah, cleaning is an act of <laughs> self love. I love it. So. You know, I think taking care of myself by cleaning, even though I don't love it, it makes when I come home that much more enjoyable. I can relax, I can recharge, I can calm down. Whereas on the flip side, when you come in and your house is a mess and scattered and there are things everywhere, there's no way you can relax. Mm. No matter what kind of day you've had, you can't come home, you can't be in your zone, you know, you can't just recharge and let go of things. It, It doesn't work because you'll look in the corner and you'll see a sock, then you'll see dust, then you'll see this, and then things start to pile up and the anxiety builds. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, so. yeah, I mean, with Amuna, the, I know that she wants to relax and I know her partner wants to relax. And that's what I've written down. The advice for Amuna here is like, start with the, 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 commonalities that you both have like what do you both want that's a great place to start they both want to relax so how can they get to that point i think and i've been there when you know i have a partner who has something going on in their life or a habit and i'm like why do you do that you know this is this is not what i want and this is you know this is different and i don't like it like <laughs> and that is like to starting with the differences that's a great twitter bio right yeah <laughs> you're different and i don't like it different and i don't like it but it's like i mean and that's what i project When what I have found, um, especially with like Mariah, like, I mean, this is the best relationship I've ever been in that we, uh, we go out of our way to find the commonalities and then work towards those commonalities instead of like pointing the finger at each other. And I'll tell you like that to me, that is when, you know, you have uh, a a good relationship or a good romantic relationship is when you have a partner that you actually want to go out of your way to like meet their requirements or their preferences. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. So for Mariah, like I love her so much that I want her to be happy. So I'm willing to compromise on, you know, some small things like nothing, you know, major, I'm not going to kill puppies for, but, uh, but, but there are some things that I compromise, but I'm happy to do it because I love her so much. And there's no, there's no perfect relationship. At least if I haven't found it, if there is one out there, I'm sure there is one out there where it's just like easy breezy, and both people are on the same page, but uh, I have never experienced that myself. Mariah, well, here's the thing. I, you're, you're eventually going to be on a different page. Of Even course, if you're on the same page. You're going to find something where you're like, yeah. my preferences are obviously different from yours. By the way, that's the thing that makes a relationship fun and exciting and alive is the fact yeah. that you have some variety between two people. Absolutely. As long as that variety doesn't have to do with your morals, with your ethics, or with your values, mm-hmm. then you realize like, oh yeah, we of course we have some differences and then yeah. we have to deal with some of those differences. Yeah. I really love what you said though about the commonality. We actually did a video a long time ago about, it was such an interesting question. It was how to get your spouse to clean. Mm. And actually, it was actually how to get your husband to clean. That was the question we kept getting asked, but uh-huh. we went gender neutral a long time ago. <laughs> so we actually just, I, I forget if it was partner or spouse, but that's the terminology that we used. Mm. And finding common ground was one of the first things that we talked about mm. because you have to meet in the middle somewhere and there yeah. has to be a starting point. One of the things that you are both such big proponents of is this is a journey. It's not like I feel this way today and I'm getting there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same way. There's so much that she will have to work through with her partner. It has to be a journey. So, you know, opening his or her mind to what could be the possibilities, what could be out there. How would life be without this much stuff? What are some materials that you can watch or read or listen to? How do you feel about that? Start bringing that into the conversation. So the clutter, the symptom, I think it's going to take a while to work that out. I think a lot of it has to happen up here first. Yeah. I mean, the best thing Amuna can do is respect her partner's battle that they're going through. I mean, you know, he's like you said, there's some emotional trauma or um, not trauma but there's something emotional like, there, going there's, on there's probably some sort of traumatic event or, so, or an inciting yeah. so the best way Muna can get him to start coming to her side is by respecting that battle that he has so yes be kind find the commonalities uh the, the, i mean just respect is all people want out of any relationship and i think you don't always have to meet in the middle right now you might have to meet him where he is mm-hmm. uh in order to understand where he is yeah and, and what you're doing there as a leader, if you're if you're going to be the leader in this situation, you often have to meet people where they are and then lead them away from where they are. Yeah. Now, you do that through your behaviors, not through your words. You can't say, well, all right, now you need to clean this up, obviously, right? And the video that you, you mentioned, Melissa, let's put a link to that, Sean, in, in the show notes. We can find that. Um, 
and uh, that way folks can can take a look at that as well. And Amun, I'd love to send you a copy of Melissa's book. It's called Clean My Space, which you can also find at cleanmyspace.com. And uh, we'll send you a copy of, of that. Our next question is from Caitlin in Pittsburgh. Hello, my name is Caitlin Gregg, and I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I wanted to know what your uh, thoughts were on keeping a hold of stuff like your birth certificate and social security cards um, what's the best you know, what's the best type of way to store these things Melissa let's talk about paperwork because she mentioned two things that I think everyone is either going to hold on to like I just got a new social security card myself um, and dude I just ordered a social security card and when I did they tried to talk me out of it why did you get that when you ordered no, it not at like all. on the social security website they were like do you actually need a social security card? What? Think about it. There's very few situations. A lot of the times when they ask for a social security card, there's something else that will supplement it. I think someone stole your identity. No, man. It really was <laughs> on the social security website. Maybe they took that off. But but yeah. I so so, so there are some that. things. I mean, I have it. So I'll, I'll explain how I do it. I'd love to actually talk to an expert about this. And that's why I have Melissa here. But um, I have a file cabinet. Mm -hmm. and I have, it's a locked file cabinet. You're such a phony. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you have a filing cabinet, and you call yourself one of the minimalists. <laughs> and and in there, I have a file with important documents, like my life insurance, mm -hmm. uh, things that need to be printed out. Uh, and most of my paperwork, however, is digitized. And Ryan and I share a scanner. Well, Ryan, Sean, Jordan, and anyone else who wants to borrow the scanner, we, we share a paper scanner, so in a photo scanner, it's the same thing. Put a link to that in the show notes as well, Sean, uh, the scanner that we use. It's relatively inexpensive, mm -hmm. and it has alleviated the need for 95% of the paper. Because as Ryan just said, most of the, the papers that we need now, they're fine if they're digitized. Mm -hmm. There are a few things where it makes sense to have a printed out copy, but even then, you should have it digitized because what if... You know, the house burns down or something happens, it's important to have some sort of backup somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the problem isn't, though, Caitlin, your birth certificate or social security card. Those two things are going to fit in one file and you're fine. Yeah, you I, can put those under your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Won't affect the function. <laughs> Just tape them to the <laughs> snowboard. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but I think that w what happens is we then develop the same mindset around everything. Well, I need to have. Uh, 17 years of tax records and I have to, mm -hmm. well, no, you probably don't. In fact, even the tax records, you could, you do need to have whatever it is, seven years in the United States, but those can be digitized as well. You don't yeah. have to have the printed out version of it. In fact, everything like that is being digitized now. So I say digitize wherever you can and there are going to be a few items and they'll fit. Uh, in fact, my file cabinet, it's absurd. Like there's, it's maybe one fourth full of papers and the rest of it is just empty and that's because unless I absolutely need to store it in there and I go through and I'll clean it out at the beginning of each year I, I just don't print it out anymore so first of all sounds like you can sell that filing cabinet and downsize uh -oh. Uh -oh. a smaller one <laughs> but is there a such thing as a, I, I don't, a I don't, smaller I, filing cabinet maybe sure. yeah oh yeah for sure okay yeah. So I, so I run three businesses mm -hmm. and uh, three of them, so two are out of my house. One of them is out of a space quite like what you're in. Uh -huh. uh, we've digitized that business and we've reduced significantly the amount of paper that we use. I love this question because it sounds so great, but it is so overwhelming mm -hmm. when sure. you think about how you're going to do it. Yeah. So having a really small filing cabinet for those valuable things, life insurance, passport, any important documents that you'll need, SSN, whatever. It could even be a lockbox. So we actually keep our stuff in a safe, okay. in oh. a fireproof safe. Um, and then our business docs that we do need and some other you know, health forms, that kind of thing, we will keep that in a filing cabinet. But I go through it every year and one of my favorite things in my house is a paper shredder, okay? Because <laughs> yeah. anything that comes with my name address that gets shredded, any documents that I don't need anymore goes right into the shredder. It's fun, it's pleasurable, <sighs> like you watch it, there's something very satisfying about <laughs> watching your like paper get shredded. Something. It yeah. really does. Yeah. Um, so that's great, and then digitizing is key. So, uh, one of the, so a couple things I wanna point out, retech. So the first one is there's a great app that you can get, I, I think it's free, uh, it's called the Adobe Scan app. Mm -hmm. So you don't even need a scanner. You can actually just use your phone 
as a scanner. Yeah. Um, so that's awesome. I use that a lot with business. If I have to sign a doc and send it off to someone, mm-hmm. I will use that app. The other thing now that I have, I have an Apple Pencil with my iPad. So I fill, a, fill out a lot of docs just using that particular tech and then I save it. It goes right to the cloud. I have not printed out so much paper using that particular uh, format. It has been wonderful. Now, you have a daughter as well, and uh, she's less than two mm-hmm. at this point. So there's paperwork involved with that as well, yeah. right? Can we talk a little bit like about that? Like immunization record? Yeah, I'm going to keep that, <laughs> you know? But other other things that come through, like her daycare even sends all of their notes and handbooks and everything through PDF. Uh-huh. Hmm. So had they not done that, I either would have requested a copy or I would have read it, made any pertinent notes in my calendar, and then just gotten rid of it. When things come in, I always say to myself, am I going to need this? Mm-hmm. Like if I were to get audited, uh-huh. would I need it? Right. If I don't, it goes in the shredder. Um, if something were to happen, there was a flood, would I need this document? Yes, I would. So it has to be accessible. Mm-hmm. But like my car insurance fol- policy from 2016, Bye. <laughs> so man. it's all about just paying very close attention to what the purpose of that document is. Do I need a physical copy of it? And if I don't, can I digitize it? Great. And making sure that everything's current because the second you don't need it. I always think about things like, why Why am I paying a mortgage or rent for you? Mm, right? Yeah. Like, why is this document? Why am I paying a mortgage to house that document? Why am I storing I don't need it. your stuff? Exactly. Basically. Yeah, it's, it's funny. And uh, so if you get a bunch of junk mail too, you can obviously shred it. Uh, an app that I use is called Paper Karma. Uh, I don't, are you familiar with Paper Karma? No, but I have a suggestion for junk mail too. Go okay, ahead. Okay, so so, so the the app is just called, I don't know if it works in Canada. I assume it does. Oh, uh, most things don't. Uh, isn't that frustrating? <laughs> yes. uh, but it's it's called Paper Karma. It's just an app and you, you snap a photo of the mail they send you and it automatically unsubscribes you Ooh. from from the list. Okay, yeah, I am downloading that. Yeah, you got to check it out. The second we finish this. And yeah. with uh, with my daughter, as my daughter got older, she's six now, and she'll bring home artwork and stuff. And so this is another type of paper oh, you have to deal with, one. right? Yep. Mm. Now, with us, uh, Ryan, you notice this when you're babysitting her last, we have one piece of artwork on, on the fridge. Yeah. And, that, and if she wants to replace it, then she has to remove that one and put the new one up. Now, we'll take a picture of the old one. I don't just like, all right, now, Ella, you need to shred that immediately. Get rid of this memory. <laughs> She'll be in therapy in 25 years. Right. My dad made me throw up the <laughs> but, but what we do is we help her better understand like the, the memory or the experience is not in the thing. So we talk to her about that, but also make her go through the, the experience of like, no, we're not going to hoard all of this stuff. But also, it's okay to have a small, for a kid to have a small collection of her artwork or a stack of, of these mm. things but uh, there is always going to be a limit and as parents we get to draw that limit uh, the the kids can have some input but ultimately if you give them if you give them all the input mm-hmm. then it's going to yeah, well, there's going to be tyranny within your household. Yeah, yeah. I would, Caitlin, too. Don't let don't let this little thing like hang you up. I know if Caitlin's like me, these little things like prevent me from taking any action because they are so overwhelming. But yeah, it's uh, don't freak yourself out too bad. So we talked about living will, birth certificate, social security, social security card, immunization records. Mm-hmm. Like what else? Death documents. So okay. if you go to the minimalists.com slash death, we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. There is a essay there called "Scared to Death of Death." And uh, because we, 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 we actually don't talk about these things. It's really mm-hmm. unfortunate. I have some close friends whose parents are in the later stages of their life and they still refuse to talk about mm-hmm. like, well, do I want to be cremated? And like in my wallet, I have just a little card that says, you know, do not resuscitate and I'm an organ donor and, and all of these, these things. And you can set yourself up for success so that you 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 and your family know exactly what you want you can have a living will you can have a last will and testament you 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 can have all of these documents and so there's some important documents there that give you a peace of mind so you don't have to worry about it once you set it up Mm. then you'll feel good about the fact that you and your loved ones know your wishes when you die now in my Mm. will it says Ryan can do whatever he wants. He can cut my head off and use it as a soccer oh, ball. The things I'm going to do. Lucky you. Things I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it says I can be shot out of a cannon if oh, you'd like. Yeah. It's, uh, we, it's fun to inject some comedy into that too because it is some of the 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 most serious things that we talk about but quite often the life's most serious challenges can be talked about only through jokes. Uh, one other thing I, I do want to put in there 
something we call a scanning party. So put a link to that in the show notes as well, Sean. Uh, having a photo scanner or a, a digital scanner in general, having some friends over to scan all the old photos and, and put them in a digital picture frame instead of them just sitting in your attic or closet and collecting dust and no one's getting any joy out of them you can find your favorites you can store them in a digital scanner and by the way if your house ever does burn down or you have a flood then they're backed up in the cloud and you still have access to all those old photos that you've scanned and you're actually using them now so a scanning party is definitely something i would recommend caitlin i'm gonna send you a copy of our book essential it's an essay collection with 150 different essays, 12 different areas of intentional living. And I think you'll find a lot of value in two of the chapters in particular. There's a chapter about stuff, which is going to be important for you, but also a, a chapter about minimalism and, and the philosophy around minimalism. So if you enjoy our podcast, you'll enjoy the audiobook version of Essential. Or if you want the book book or the ebook, we're happy to send those to you as well. Ryan, what time is it? You know what time it is? It is time for our lightning round where we answer questions from social media. We do indeed. We are at The Minimalists on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Melissa, what are your, uh, what are your handles on social where media? Where are you at on the social medias? Where I'm at, I'm at <laughs> Melissa Maker uh -huh. and at Clean My Space. There cool. you go. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We'll put a link to your website in the show notes as well so people can find you over there. Ryan, what question we got here? Our first question is from Mika. I've given up hope. Mm. My dirty, cluttered house just sits there, and I just sit and stare at it. Mm -hmm. I have creative plans, but there's a mountain between me and those plans. What should I do about my stasis? Now, so here's the thing. There's a mm. mountain of stuff, and that's what she's seeing, but the, the, that's the almost literal mountain, or at least the, the physical manifestation, but the real mountain is, is a psychological mountain, mm. right? You nailed it. I mean, that's what it is. It's it's the procrastination. It's there's so much to do. I don't know where to start, so I'm not going to start. Mm. And then creative plans get put on hold. And then a week, a month, a year passes. Our house isn't any cleaner, and our creative pursuits haven't gone any further for that reason. Mm. So I think first and foremost, and I heard you speak about this earlier when you, you were answering Caitlin's question. It's sort of like you have to stare the ugly things in the face. Like you yeah. have to stare death in the face. You have to stare, not in that way, but like <laughs> dealing with the documents. Right. You know, we did our last will and testament too. It, it was a horrible process when you think about it, but then you get it done and it wasn't as bad as you thought it was. Mm -hmm. And those documents are in our safe and we don't have to think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. But you know, in this situation with Mika, what it comes down to is saying, what needs to be done? I'm a list person. So even in my book, I talk about it like put a list together. Then I have what I call my MIAs, my most important areas. Mm. So think about what your most important areas are. Start with that. Put five minutes. Put one episode of this podcast yeah. on clean for that amount of time and start chipping away one bit at a time because – you can't look at your whole house. I find people, when they get their most overwhelmed, it's because they're looking at the big picture mm -hmm. yeah. and they're like, I can't do this. I Sorry. can't eat the entire elephant. But can't you eat the to, entire elephant, you exactly. You have to eat it one bite at a time. You, you talked about procrastination. and uh, There's one thing that I'll often say is, is don't let your procrastination turn pro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> and that's, that's kind of what we've done here. I've got a pithy answer for you here. Oh, by the way, we, we try to collect all of our pithy answers and uh, put them in the show notes, Sean does. And then Jessica puts all of our minimal maxims in one place at minimalmaxims.com. Here's, here's my pithy answer. You cannot get where you're going without moving from where you are. So I think that's where Mika is right now. She's, she's sort of stuck where she is. And she wants to be somewhere else. She wants to be on the other side of the mountain of, of, of stuff, right? But just wishing you're on the other side of the mountain without beginning the journey... You're just going to keep wishing in perpetuity. Yeah. That's not a good place to be. I also want to say that unlike diet or exercise, cleaning, you get results immediately. Like this. That's a like great this. Point. So if you put in 5, 10, 15, 30 minutes of cleaning, yeah. you will see visible results instantly. Right. And that can even encourage you to want to, you know, go on and pursue a little bit more cleaning. Is okay, I did 30 start? minutes. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're in, at a, an entire house that when you've given up hope, 
and, and and is there a place where you're like here's here's the best bang for your buck? Just here's where a you small space. Okay. Just a, you know a powder room or a front entryway, just a small space where when you put the time in, you'll actually see the results yeah. after. Because if you tackle a huge room like you know your kitchen or your bedroom, you might feel like oh my gosh, this is gonna take three hours. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't have it in you to do three hours at the beginning. Yeah. So maybe you just have to start with a small space first, and then at the end you really need to celebrate that. Yeah. Like you have to look at it and say, wow, you know, take a picture, send it to your friends, whatever it is that you have to do. Yes. Reward is really important as well. And just feeding that that positivity. So, you know, seeing what you've done, feeling really good about it and affirming that to yourself and, and just riding high on that. Like that's what, like when I'm struggling with cleaning, that's what I have to do. I have mm -hmm. to look at the space and say, wow, that felt really good. Mm -hmm. Where else can I apply this energy? Yes. Yeah, I totally agree. It makes me think about, uh, I had to paint our trailer uh, in high school. Uh -huh. And like that's how I how I did it, just one little piece at a time. I remember like looking at the whole trailer and I'm like, oh crap, I'm never gonna get this done. Mm -hmm. Right. But then I was like, all right, I'm just gonna start with this one wall today. And if I can get this wall done, I'll feel good about myself. Was it a single wide or a double wide? It was double wide. It was a nice double wide too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my pithy answer is this. When you're hopeless, find someone who's hopeful. So Mika, you might be down and out right now. And maybe she's just in a state of depression. And she can't even you know, take those first initial steps. Um, I mean, there's a saying, Mika. Uh, sometimes the bravest action you can take is ask for help. And you might have to seek uh, someone to help you deal with that emotional clutter that you have going on. You might have to bring a friend in and, and have them help you um, just kind of tackle it uh, to tackle it together. Um, That's really helpful. Yeah. You might have to, uh, yeah. I mean, I really say this and it's kind of half true. Like you want to look at some inspirational things, read books, uh, listen to podcasts. Um, the problem is that you don't want to get just stuck in and looking at inspirational things. It's a very mm -hmm. easy place to get stuck in. Yeah, it's like people watch a lot of cleaning videos, but then they they don't actually clean. They're just procrastinating right. with the cleaning. Right. So so I I do want you to get some inspiration from somewhere. But if you're at a point where you've got all the inspiration, but you are still having trouble taking the action, I mean, you gotta ask for help. And there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Yeah. It could also be a matter of thinking ahead, that creative pursuit that she has, maybe that's really scaring her. So mm. as long as she's keeping herself in the cluttered mess, she doesn't have to go and do the thing that scares her the most. Mm. Yeah. All right, before we get into our added value segment and our listener tips today, it looks like we have a bunch more surprise questions this week. Indeed we do, Ryan. Uh, let's see. How can we make holiday gatherings flow better with less after clutter? I'm, I'm really loving this, this new word, after clutter. Also, I'm out of storage space. What should I do with the new clutter I can't organize? So we have old clutter and then the new clutter. <laughs> How can I be a minimalist as a student with all the supplies that come with being a student? And how does your physical environment affect your mental state? And how do I encourage my child's grandparents to tidy up their home for my own child's safety? Plus, just a million more questions for Melissa Maker, plus 10 rules for a cleaner home. That's from Melissa and also from Melissa, five secret storage spots in your house. And if you want to hear all that, you can listen to this week's Maximal episode available exclusively on Patreon. That's right. You currently listen to our weekly Minimal episode, but each week, Ryan and I record an entirely different, much longer Maximal episode on the Minimalist private podcast, which gives us the private space we need to talk about topics we don't usually discuss in public. Plus, Patreon is the best way for us to fund this podcast and keep it 100% advertisement free. When you subscribe to the Minimalist Private Podcast on Patreon, you'll also receive a personal link so that our maximal episodes play in your favorite podcast app. You can find all the details and all the good stuff, including an additional private podcast episode every week over at theminimalists.com slash support. Ryan, what else you got for us this week? Here are some voicemail comments and tips from our listeners. Hi, Josh and Ryan. My name is Sandra and I'm from Norway. I would like to share a quote that changed my view on minimalism. I've been on this journey for about seven years now, and this month I have been doing my version on the minimalism game where I try to let go of 500 items in total. My boyfriend saw a pair of shoes I was going to sell and said that they were nice shoes. I told him I agreed, but that I did not wear them and that they did not add value to my life anymore. He then said this, Just because something is pretty doesn't mean you have to own it. 
Hey Ryan and Josh, this is Muriel from Grand Haven, Michigan. I just listened to episode 210 about student debt. I have a tip related to that topic I wanted to share. I am currently a senior at Grand Valley State University and I'll be graduating this May with no student debt. I've put in a lot of work in many ways to get to this point, but my number one recommendation for people looking to avoid student debt is to apply for scholarships specific to who you are. For example, I'm studying natural resources management, so I applied to many scholarships related to my field of study. You can find scholarships based on your interests, academic performance, special talents, your major, and many other things. I even got a $1,000 scholarship from my credit union. There are scholarships for everything. You just have to intentionally search out the ones you have the best chance of getting. They may take a long time to apply for, but it's worth the time you put in if they help you stay out of debt. Additionally, check to see if your university has a list of available scholarships. GVSU has a website called My Scholarships where you can create a profile, and they suggest scholarships specific to you, and you can apply for them directly through the website. You can also search for specific scholarships there. This is what I found to work for me, and I hope some of your listeners find this helpful. All right, y'all. Thanks again to Melissa Maker for joining us today. Check her out, cleanmyspace.com. You can also check out her YouTube channel. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. She has over 600 videos on her YouTube channel. Very practical, very useful, very helpful. I think you'll find a lot of value in that. Also, her book is called Clean My Space. If you have a question, comment, or minimalism tip for our podcast, oh, before that, uh, right here, right now, as a segment we do where we talk about something that's going on in the life of the minimalists. We have two things for you. Since we're talking about our homes and cleaning your home, we have video tours of both of our homes, Ryan. And so uh, we both did video tours this year of our homes. And we'll put a link to those. Actually, just go to our YouTube channel. You'll find them right there. YouTube.com slash The Minimalist. You can find a video tour of my home and my family and then Ryan and Mariah and their home. And you own a surprisingly little amount of things. <laughs> I've always considered you to be a messy minimalist, but your place is not nearly as messy as See, I the, thought. The key is, Josh, is you get rid of everything mm. and sulk in an empty apartment. It's a great tip. <laughs> Pro tip, everyone. <laughs> you could tweet that podcast, Sean. All right, if you have a question, comment, or minimalism tip for our podcast, leave us a voicemail, 406-219-7839, or send a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. You can comment on this episode on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash theminimalists. If you want our show notes in your inbox, sign up for our emails over at theminimalists.com. Just go there in your email address at the top. You can also find all of our free wallpapers over there and a bunch of other resources, articles, etc. But we'll put our show notes in your inbox and also send you our simple Sunday emails anytime those come out. You know what we won't send you? Spam, junk, advertisements, anything that won't add value to your life. And of course, unsubscribe anytime if it's not adding value. Speaking of adding value, for our added value this week, uh, you know Rustin Kelly? <laughs> He's uh, Casey Musgrave's husband. And he had one of my favorite albums of last year. Mm. And this year, he, he released a, a covers album. It's a short album. It's maybe nine songs. It's, it, the album itself is called Dirt Emo. And he's sort of take, he's taking these, these 90 songs like Teenage Dirtbag. Uh, and he's covering it in a way where they actually sound way better than the originals. I love when that happens. It, isn't that... It, and it almost like brings out the... It brings out something about the lyrics you didn't actually yeah. catch the first oh, time. Oh, dude, it reminds me of Obadiah Parker's uh, Hey Ya. Oh, Reads man. the Outcast song. And you realize how sad that Outcast song yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, it was so good. But they, they made that Outcast song where it's just like, yeah, Hey Ya, and it's all upbeat, yeah. but when he plays it, it's it's sort of downtrodden. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you notice different parts of the song that you normally wouldn't. So let's finish the day with Teenage Dirtbag from Rustin Kelly's new acoustic covers album. Uh, that album is called Dirt Emo. And if you leave here today with, uh, with one message, we hope it's this. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. The Minimalists.